what you do. When faced by an armed and determined enemy, first you... And either you bash him one, or you stick him in the belly. And if you want to be real nasty, you... Right! Next man. You do. Let's try that again. You've had your treat. Let someone else have some fun. Proper airborne, weren't you, Canada? Didn't you hear me, Evans? Well, what about some of the other boys, Sarge? I don't want to be too selfish. Come on. Right! When faced by an armed and determined enemy, first you... And either you bash him one or you stick him in the belly. And if you want to be real nasty, you... Straight on his flank, flank, flank. Right! Gordon? He's leaving himself wide open. Watch. I am, am I? Come on. When faced by an armed and determined enemy, first you... Oh! Just a minute. What's your name? McKendrick, sir. The British Army appreciates your generosity and donating gratuitous lessons in hand-to-hand -hand combat. As it happens, the Army's already prepared a manual based on some actual experience in real fighting. In future, you will cooperate with your instructors and refrain from exhibitions of circus gymnastics. Is that clear? Perfectly, sir. Hey, who's that new geezer over there? Don't ask me. I've never seen him before. You don't seem to like our Canada. Fall out. Carry on, Sergeant. Very good, sir. If you can. Next man. How long is it now, Flash? I was born up here. That sergeant must be Dracula's big brother. I'm afraid it's all my fault. And you ain't even queasy. How come, Canada? I'm a roller coaster man myself. That completes it, sir. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Paul. That was most instructive. Thank you, sir. If a little barbarous. Excuse me, sir. Yeah? As you've only just arrived here, sir, and I've... You're saying? Well, I thought that somebody who'd been here some time might be quite useful to you, sir. For instance? You'll be needing a second in command for that special stunt you've come to talk over, sir. Young man, stunt is a word I do not like, not when applied to a military operation. Slip of the tongue, sir, nothing more. Uh, the chief instructor said he put a word in. He did. It's a word I wouldn't care to use. But we'll see. A falling object descends earthwards at the rate of 32 feet a second, accelerating to the maximum speed of 176 feet a second. Blimey, that's what I call descending. Don't you worry, you'll be all right, Alf, as long as you land on that big head of yours. Green light on. Action stations number one and... Uh, hold it! And what may I ask are you doing up there? Practicing. If you want to be polite to a regimental sergeant major, you address him as sir. Practicing, sir. And get down from there before I throw you into the gun room! I have two volunteers to put him on his bed. You! Are you? At the double! Oh, my leg. So you're what they're turning out as soldiers these days. I wanted to see for myself. Mm. Mm -hmm. A horrible lot of little men. Well, thank God we've still got a navy. Here, let's take a look. And I'll kick him in the... Fast balloon jump. All 600 hours tomorrow. Got it? Balloon jump? Look it up, Taffy. What does it say? Oh, balloons. 
The preliminary reports on the use of balloons for initial jumps are generally favorable. Due to the lack of the impact of the slipstream on the body, the, the a tendency of the pupil to twist and somersault is almost eliminated. That's nice. On the other hand, the jumper has to fall a far longer distance before his parachute becomes fully opened. This delayed opening produces an additional thrill. You lucky people. The phenomena known as a Roman candle in which the parachute leaves the bag but fails to open in time. Lay off, will you? It's a Roman candle. Shoot, that doesn't open. Did you ever see one? Yeah, I saw one. What happened to the blood? Go to sleep with you unbushed. What's wrong with this one? It's uh, X-type, different from the others. You're lucky. It's what the pilots and instructors usually have. Come on, change, will you? Hurry up, you. Well, the customer is always right. Though we do happen to pack about 50 parachutes a day, at least. Don't get sore. Oh, I'm not sore. I suppose it's quite natural for a chap to be a bit edgy before his first jump. Is it? Everybody is. It's nothing to do with... Well, being frightened, you know. That's very interesting. There. Now you can stop worrying and relax. It's a special I keep on one side. It's the best shoot I ever packed. Good. I wouldn't like to have to repack it on the way down. Hey, what's your name? Gardner. What Gardner? Just Gardner. Working girls don't have Christian names. You know, I haven't seen you around. I don't get around. Oh, uh, officer material. I said we work here. On your way, Mr. Maple Leaf. rush now. All right. We'll have to pick out a few volunteers for the first stick. Canada. Suppose you show us how it's done. You like doing that. Who else, Corbidores? You, Evans. Gordon. Come on, Stubbins. Each man check his release box. Easy now. Nothing worse than a lot of blokes hitting their boxes at the same time. It sounds like the Salvation Army on a Sunday afternoon. Now you've got nothing to worry about. They're smashing parachute. They ought to be at 60 pounds apiece. your color. You look a little green. What color would you like? Suppose you surprise me. Okay, number one. A good parachuting position. Action station number one. Jump when I touch you on the shoulder. Are you ready? Go. There goes my first one. steadily now. Your head well forward, feet together. Okay, hold that. Okay, number two.
Stand by number three. Ready? Go! Look at mine. Oh, the silly, clumsy clot. like an old established firm. Heavy. Hmm. How about a drink tonight? <laughs> I might be able to manage Hello, it. Hello, Canada. Have a nice trip. You don't have to push me to make me jump. No offense. Just trying to help. I don't need that kind of help. What makes you such a ruddy hero, McKendrick? It just ain't natural. If he puts his hands on me again, I'll brain him. How about that drink? Thank you, McKendrick. But this firm doesn't mix business with pleasure. Gentlemen, we don't know one another very well yet. But this morning you start your training and we can start to find out. Half of myself. Information, I'm a professional soldier. Intention, I propose to remain a professional soldier when this war is over. My method will be to see that you men are better soldiers than the men that you're fighting against. It's as simple as that. Now, this morning you make your first jump from an aircraft. Now, you may have heard parachuting described as dicing with death in the skies. It's a revolting phrase, and quite apart from that, it's grossly untrue. Parachuting, in any case, is just a means to an end. It gets you into battle, no more. After that, you're an ordinary soldier. Now, remember that. You're soldiers, not stuntmen. Now, to get your wings, you do seven jumps. After that, you jump whenever ordered. A refusal means 84 days' detention and your wings stripped off in front of the colonel. So if any of you has any idea that he doesn't want any part of this, now's the time to say so. And it's no disgrace, either. Not now. Good. Carry on, Sergeant. Sir. All yours, Mr. Aldrich. Sergeant. Good left. Top. Finish it. Left, right. Top. 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 What was that? The engine changed its noise. Means the pilot's throttling back. Yes, that means we've got to get ready. Prepare for action. Nothing to it, my lads. 88 jumps I've had, loved every one of them. Just like falling off a log. No any further. Right, what's the red light? Action stations number one. Come on now, action stations. All right, tell you what I'll do. I'll jump first just to show you what a piece of cake really looks like. Open doors. Sergeant, you'll take over as dispatcher. Right. I think we get paid extra for this. Proper swindle, if you ask me. Stand by. Green light on. Go. Just like falling off a log.
smile on his face as well. You're trying to do turn this into a wake. Now, if you two girls go and sit over there, I'll get you drinks. Easy as falling off a log, he said. Look, he made 88 jumps, and the odds finally caught up with him. Didn't have to make that last jump. That's the way he played it, because he was a right guy. If he were here, he'd tell you to drink that beer instead of crying and do it. Let's have a game of darts, shall we? You two go ahead. I'm all right. I don't care for darts either. Maybe it'll make him more cheerful. Well, that's a rousing welcome. What did you expect? A 21 gun salute? Make it 48, will you? I heard about this morning. About Breton. Let's talk about something else, huh? I was wrong about you. I thought you were like most of the others. Scared inside and covering up. But you're not scared, are you? Sure I am. No, you're not. You know what they say around here? There are two types of men who jump. Those who are crazy and those who are scared. You're neither, and I don't think I like it. Another drink? You pride yourself on it, don't you? It's important to you, very important. What? Being brave all the time. Loads of physical courage. <laughs> what is this? Truth or consequences? You're quite right. Let it pass. You know, I didn't know you were interested. It's purely academic, I assure you. You don't look academic to me. Mr. McKendrick, it may interest you to know that a great many women are not partial to the Superman type. They prefer a little human weakness, a little humility. Look, everybody's scared of something. That coming from you could be quite an admission. I gather you two gentlemen know each other. Pinky, this is Mr. McKendrick. Please to meet you. Sit down, McKendrick. Here is the news. It was announced from Washington today that President Roosevelt has transferred 50 American destroyers to His Majesty's government as part of a Lend-Lease grant. Lend-Lease. In exchange, leases have been given the United States for the construction of airfields and naval bases in British Commonwealth territory as part of America's defense program. Defense? What are the Yanks defending? Who's shooting at them? Yeah, that's right. Fifty stinking tin cans. Lousy old tubs that ain't been a sea since World War I. Yeah, and a nice profit they make from it. America will fight, you'll see. Yeah, they'll fight. Fight to the last Englishman. Last Welshman, too. They're all right when it comes to talking war. What I say is, when do they start fighting it? What about right now? You sound like a bloody yank yourself! Anybody got a razor blade? What do you want a razor blade for? You think he's gonna cut his throat? Odd oh, like private doors. You know, if you ask me, you're lucky to get busted. Look at that bloke Hitler. He was a corporal. Ain't doing him much good, is it? You got something there. Is that correct, McHenry? No, sir. I started it. Anything to add? No, sir. Very well. 
Striking a superior is a court-martial offence. But Corporal Dawes says that he started it. So, I want to find out what really happened. You go back under close arrest. I'm a mechanic. I'm out! Ta! Quick! March! Left, right, left, right, left, right, left! Give me a service record, will you, Sergeant Major? Yes, sir. Angry man, that one. So get that out of him, sir. Well, anger's a good thing sometimes in a fighting soldier, properly directed, of course. Are you suggesting, sir, that he be given special treatment? On the contrary, Sergeant Major. Let me see now. He enlisted Montreal, place of birth, Los Angeles. Anything else, sir? College, two years. Profession, just as aircraft industry, that's all. Any previous military experience, sir? None listed. Pretty vague, huh? Hmm. So I suppose when you're short of men, you don't ask too many questions. Ask the security boys to run a special check on him, will you, Sergeant Major? Yes, sir. He interests me. Hi there. No prison pallor, I see. What's this, Ladies Rehabilitation Society? No, I've been waiting here to apologize. Well, well. Not to you, not now, but, well, to the United States. We accept your apology. Look, I came here with good intentions, and at another time I might admit you had some provocation for the other night. But for a grown man to, well, it's positively disgraceful, and I ruined my best pair of nylons. Have you any idea what nylons cost these days, that is, if you can get them? Whatever it was, it was worth it. So help me, next time I have a bottle, I'll launch that guy. Hold it! Keep trying, Plosky. Polesky. What's the matter, Cookie? I got my walking papers. They're sending me back to my old unit. You'd be the best cook in the British Army. Not me. I've applied for a transfer to the commanders. Hey, you've got something there. Not a help, McKendrick. I couldn't possibly agree to a transfer. Look, do you realize what it costs to train just one parachutist? Over 5,000 pounds. If I transfer you, what have we got for our money? Absolutely nothing. There are two ways a man can get out of here. By refusing to jump, or feet first. Is that final, sir? Of course, you could refuse to jump. All right, you can fall out. London, sir. Yes, I suppose I should have known. Your wings. Thank you, sir. Company! Aye! Left! You've been rehearsing this for months on mock-ups of the actual terrain. It should be as familiar to you as the back of your hand. Only this is the real thing. Operation Pegasus goes tonight. Now, you all know its purpose. It's to bring back a piece of German radar equipment that has been helping to shoot down our bombers. Now, to recapitulate for the last time. Our first group will take the house and the radar post. And we'll hold it until our radar expert, whom you'll meet later, can dismantle the equipment and get what he needs. Meanwhile, we will hold off the Jerry Garrison in the farmhouse 
And our second group will take and hold the beaches where we'll join them until the Navy can take us on. Any questions? Any suggestions? Right. Now, you men come from a lot of different places and a lot of different units. But you've certain things in common. You are all volunteers, and you're all hand-picked. That's a British tradition that we inherited from the first original Roman legions. You're well armed. I think you've been well trained. You've got a full moon and a rising tide. The rest is up to you. Good hunt. Everyone report to the parachute issuing room in half an hour. Ah. What's that? Oh, one of the girls wrote it. Give my heroes kind wind and fair weather. Let no parachute sidle or slump. For today we go warring together. And my soul will be there at the jump. It's rather good, isn't it? I wouldn't know. I... Port is not in my line. Why do you always have... Stop talking there! Sorry for the man who hears the pipes and who wasn't born in Scotland. Stand by, Gwynplaine! Gwynplaine! Climb aboard, boys. Well, good luck to you. I'll see you back at the camp in the morning. I hope so, sir. Listen, everybody. This is Flight Sergeant Fox. He's our radar dismantling expert. Take a good look at him. All right, sit down now. Our job's going to be to take very good care of him. I'll be taking too bloody good care of myself. Thank you. Little lace doily. Look at him. No nerves. 
sleeps through it all. One more crack like that, there'll be no teeth. That's enough of that. Save all that for the jellies. I think the men are getting a bit on edge, sir. You think they're the only ones? Do I ever tell you about the Gurkhas when I was in India? Wonderful little soldiers. When I asked for volunteers to jump, the whole battalion stepped forward. So I told them about their conditions of training and that they do their first jump from a thousand feet. There was absolute uproar. Then finally, their subadar major, he's the equivalent of the RSM, stepped forward and said, Sai, the men are not easy in their minds. They would rather do their first jump from 500 feet. But look, I said, at 500 feet, the parachutes mayn't have time to open. A broad grin spread over his face. Oh, Saib, he said, we didn't realize we were going to have parachutes. <laughs> Thank you. I never thought it was that funny, myself. Just crossing the French coast. We'll be throwing you out in a few minutes. Thank you, Skipper. Prepare for action. One last word. All wounded have to be left just where they are. Get in and out as quickly as you can. That's all. Well, good luck, everybody. If all else fails, just tread on their blank, blank fingers. Quick as you can, Sergeant Box. Well, why don't you kiss it? <laughs> <laughs> 
Get a ready move on yourself, man. Box. We don't want to keep the Navy waiting. All right, sir, just coming. You two stick close to Sergeant Box. Don't let him out of your sight. Yes, sir. find us in this suit. What's happening to the Navy? Looks like a long swim home. You swim? Lustok! Lustok! More and more of the Germans. Hurry! Hurry! Get a move on! Don't play around there in the bloody sand! 
I thought you weren't going to make it. So did I. We met a German destroyer outside the port. Here you are, boys. Thanks. Well, what was it like? I don't know, very foggy. The Germans? Uh, I couldn't understand a word they said. Here. He's still under a sedative, so please don't stay too long. Thank you. Hello, cop. Who is it? Blimey, it's the Yank. I feel. Still dopey. Otherwise, I'm in the pink. What I can to say is... Uh, leave off, will you? It could have happened to anybody. How are the boys? Well, they're fine. Can I get you something? Not a thing. Sure now? Sure. I'm fine. Except my feet, they're, they're very cold. Do you think you could tuck that blanket in for me? I can't reach it from here. Sure. How's that? Oh, that's much better. Well, it'll get warm in a minute. I'd uh, better go and let you get some sleep. Give my love to the boys. Tell them I'll be jumping with them in a fortnight again. Sure, I'll see you in the morning. Better men than you have felt like that. Thought you British were all for that stiff upper lip and that sort of thing. We're for a lot of things you might be surprised at. You're not kidding. What's this with a handkerchief? Tying it to my chute. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, just an old English custom. Everything's a custom around here. I guess I just don't understand you people. No. And I don't understand you. So why should I ever expect you to understand me? something you will understand. Henceforth, therefore, the new official headgear will be worn at all times, unless personal or expressly directed otherwise by higher authority. Signed, J. Wilcox, DSO, MC, Lieutenant Colonel for Major General Commanding, 1st Airborne Division. Right, pull out front rank. Draw issue. 718, please. Uh, 718. Seven and a half for me, please. Seven. By seven and a half. Well, put them on, or doesn't the style suit you? Put it on straight, man. You're not in a ruddy fashion parade. 
Try seven. Very becoming, sir. Well, anyway, get your hair cut. Colonel Kendrick, grab a chair and sit down. I just had an Army Council instruction to raise more artists. I've sent your name in. There's nothing to worry about. You just go before a selection committee, but that's a pure formality. I, uh, I don't want a commission, sir. It's not entirely a question of what you want, is it, McKendrick? The Army needs officers. I think that you, among others, would make a good one. So does Captain Langton. That should be enough. Sir, there's no regulation that says I have to take a commission. No, there's no regulation. But if a man has initiative and the power to lead, as I believe you have, he has an equivalent responsibility. Think it over. I have, sir. There are others who'd make better leaders. What's the matter, McKendrick? Don't you like officers? There's no regulation about that, either. No disrespect, sir. But I'm a private. I take orders. Let somebody else give them. I see. Very well, McKendrick, that's all. than our beat-up old Wellingtons. They do to me, honey. We come out like gentlemen through the door. Oh, you cutie. He's talking about you, darling, not me. Morning, McKendry. Where's the wing commander? Search me, Mac. I'm a stranger here myself. Who's in command of this squadron? Inside. Hey, Shorty, front and center. My name's Hamilton. Sorry we're late. We're all a little punchy. No shut-eye for the last 36 hours. Been on maneuvers with the airborne guys over Ireland. Hmm, so I heard. Hey, bud, catch. Thanks, Mac. I just thought someone should salute someone around here. Where'd you get that bonnet, Mamie? Sorry, but nobody laughs at the Red Beret twice. Excuse me. Take that cabbage out of that silly face. I don't have to, Limey. You wanna play? Say, I know you. Kelly Field. You were the guy that was flying that... Come on, Penny. Well, what did he mean? Some mistake. But he sounded as if he knew you, didn't he? Got his wires crossed. What's this? Cinderella's pumpkin. Where'd you get it? Little game called poker. Does it go? We'll soon find out. We children used to hate leaving here when the holidays were over. Somehow, nowadays, we never seem to come to the place. 
Where would you get the time? I suppose you're right. Gee, it's good to be in a house again. Of course, we people forget that you're miles and miles away from home. You must miss not having your own home to go to. We miss a lot of things. You ought to do that more often. What? Smile. It suits you. Oh, put a match to the fire, would you? Sure. The wood shouldn't be damp. Mother was here a fortnight ago. That's something I could miss cheerfully. Oh, don't close them completely. I... I want to look out. At what? Mm, sky, guns. You should do this more often. Thanks. I'd better go and make some tea. Everything stops for tea in England. Not always. Steve. Why didn't you ever tell me? Tell you what? I believe you're in some sort of trouble. You believe that you believe anything? No. I believe you're hiding something. What have I got to hide? That American sergeant today, the one you picked a fight with. I picked a fight. Made fun of the beret. Anyway, he seemed to know you. You seem to know an awful lot about technical flying. Or so the boys who jump say. And that funny ring you wear. American officers wear that too. I noticed it today. You ought to belong to the FBI. Tell me. There's nothing to tell. Why the ring? S. McKendrick. Serial number 47532. Go on, Canada. Go on. I was flying a B-24 testing rockets. Bob Murray was my... He was my co-pilot. Bob was... <laughs> used to call him Robbie. He and I were as close as any two guys could ever be. I was crazy about his wife and his kids. Practically lived at their house. One day we were coming in on a target that was testing rockets. A rocket that got caught in the tube. I got to thinking about Robbie and his wife and his kids. I knew I could land it without exploding it, but I got to thinking about them and I told him to jump. He didn't want to. He wanted to ride it down with me. I told him to jump because there was an order. He jumped and he... He, he Roman candled. Yeah. Yeah, he Roman candled. I had to tell his wife. Never forget the look on her face. That's when I handed him my resignation. But why? It wasn't your fault. You... You gave the proper order. Yeah, that's what the War Department said. That's what they all said. But I was through giving orders. You can give too many wrong ones. You filled in quite a few blanks. Why you're over here in this regiment. Why you don't want to take a commission again. Where do you hear that? <laughs> Things get around. You know, you should have accepted. All that's over and done with. So what? Let's drop it. I wish I could help you. 
You can. No more true confessions. <laughs> don't blame me for all of it. I don't. I guess I'm just a sucker for candlelight. The man with the camouflaged heart. Winter kitchen. Well, that means snow. I wonder where we'll be invaded next. Switzerland? Not if they advertise it on the board. Kendrick. Come on in, man. Yes, sir. Carry on with what you're doing, son, Major. Come in, McKendrick. Stand easy. Thank you, sir. Well, it's nice to have one's judgment proved right occasionally. I suppose you know what I'm talking about? No, sir. I think you should. Withholding information about previous service on enlistment is quite a serious offense. But I don't think I'll take any action. Sir, who gave you this information? Strictly confidential. I think I know. I'd like to talk again about that commission. Still feel the way I did, sir. McKendrick, you've got to grow up someday. You can't run away from responsibilities, even the smallest ones. As if you do, one fine day, whether you're wearing three stars or three stripes or nothing at all, the men are going to look to you. And when they do, I hope to heaven you don't let them down. Yes, I hope to heaven you don't. Well, that seems to be all. Sir, I... Yeah? Now that the United States is in the war, I'd like to go and join one of my own outfits. That's all the same war. Would you take a commission in your own outfit? No, sir. I'd stay a dog face. Then you might as well stay just where you are. Yes, sir. Sir, Major. Sir. Send the file back to security and say thank you for the information. And so, Major, while you're about it, make me out an application for transfer to the American Army. But don't take his name off the commission list. What's the matter, darling? You don't want to be an officer's girl. Well, I suppose I shall have to be someday. Not mine. Darling, I just don't see any sense in making an issue out of a simple thing like this. What did you tell Colonel Snow? Snow? You had it all figured out, didn't you? A little heart-to-heart -heart talk, that would fix everything. But I didn't tell the Colonel anything. That was something between you and me and nobody else. Look, I haven't spoken about you to anybody. I don't believe you. Whether you did or you didn't, it's no good. You know too much about me anyway. Perhaps I do. At least I know it's time you grew up and stopped nursing that pet phobia of yours, you pathological hero. So long, baby. Wait till we keep. Both the downy lads. Rise and shine. Draw your winter kit from the quartermaster stores. We're leaving one hour from now. Stand by your beds. Turn out the contents of your pockets. Got to be particular what the jerrys find on you if they take you prisoner. Or find you dead. Any questions? Yes, sir. But it's Sunday to die. Well, well, I'd made plans. So is the army, and they usually win in cases like this, especially tonight. Come on, let's have a look now. What have we got here? Nice little crate you got here. Fine, fine. These your children? Yes, sir. Fine looking boys, they seem. Thank you, sir. Would your lordship like a nice cup of tea brought to him in bed this morning? Move yourself, son! Next man. You're going to stay in bed all day, too. Hey, did you hear what he said? He called you son. What do you want me to call him? Daddy? the 
comedy. Give me a shoot. Well, I've got a spot of news for you. Three hours ago, we began the invasion of North Africa. The First Army has already landed successfully near Algiers and is moving east towards Tunis. Sir, Major. Now, our particular objective is the airfield here. So it looks as though we'll not need our smoke here. We refuel at Gibraltar and leapfrog 350 miles ahead of the army to take this airfield and destroy it before the Jellies can get there. They want it just as badly as we do. They're probably rushing reinforcements there at this very minute. So this is a race that we cannot afford to lose. Rupert, get those shoots clear. Right, sir. Come on, my stick. So you stand fast. Come on, Sergeant Major. Boys, get going. Get this stuff out of here. Form a chain. Robert, whose aircraft is this? Mine, worse luck. I'm afraid it's a write-off. Your boys will have to wait for the next lift. But that may not be for days, sir. Sorry, old boy. Yes, Jimmy. They want us to win plane, sir. All right, get them cracking. All right, Sergeant Major, get them aboard. Good luck. Battalion! Oh, no. Nothing for it, children. Turn in your shoots. How about it, sir? Not a chance. Forget it. You're both under close arrest. Heaven help me, so am I. Come on, let's go. Come on! Holy cats, look at those crazy bee feeders. Asking for a court martial. A lot of you. Yes, sir. We're very sorry, sir. Not to throw you all off the plane. Now wait till we get over that airfield. Well, shut that blasted door, or we'll never get airborne.
these prisoners away. Good night, General. Get this ready for demolition. Rendezvous at the end of the airstrip. Yes, sir. Uh, you two sappers, over here. And get your charges out. And we're going to blow all this stuff up now. If you can delay till the very last minute till the Jerry's actually get here, it'll give us just that much longer. We'll have it go, sir. Don't you worry. Sir, Major. Sir. Ready to move. All in the rear. All in fire. Advance. <laughs> Falschenberger gesichtet. Halt dich bereit. Jawohl, Herr Leutnant. Vorwärts. The setting up a roadblock. If we can get them across this road, we'll be all right. machine guns. Three minutes. Plotsky's found a German container, sir. 
McKendrick, go on over and help. There might be some medical supplies in it. Yes, sir. Anything I can do to help? No, sir. I think I can manage. How's that container? It's coming, sir. Some schmeiser, sir, and a funny-looking gadget. Ask Patrona. If that was a cup of tea now, it'd be some use. Two minutes. Englishman, why are you so stubborn? Should I tell him there's a stubborn yank here too, McKendrick? Look, sir. It's a rocket type bazooka. I think we can make a path if we fire this on the ground and. And exploded the mines? Yes, what do you think? It might work. We'd have to supplement the bazooka with grenades. One minute. It's worth trying. I can't move fast enough with this leg, but I'll give you covering fire from here. Go out and try it. Fifty seconds. I repeat, no escape is possible. This is your last chance to surrender. What are you waiting for? Forty seconds. You had to face it sometime. That was in the cards from the beginning. I told you before, you've got to grow up someday. What if it won't work? What if these men get... When are you going to stop running away from that, McKendry? Thirty seconds. Maybe you're right, sir. Over to that shell hole over there. Bring some ammunition for this bazooka. Come on. Twenty seconds. Are you still with us? Good. Hello. I sent McKendrick out to try and blast a path through the minefields with the bazooka. Ten seconds. Section. See if you can knock out that armored car. Then have a go at the mortar pistol. Yes, sir. from here. You're the expert, come on. All right, but you pick out the targets. Right by that rock. Keep your heads down. That's done. Do you hear? We're going to get out of here. Sir, sir. Don't try and move. Take it easy. Take it easy. Come on, sir. The way's clear. Can you hear moving? Do you hear them, sir? Do you hear them? The pipes. Do you hear them, sir? Do you hear them? 
We'll be all right. We'll be all right. Oh, I'm sorry for the man who used the pipes. And who was me? Listen. Listen. They're coming. Like you said. They're coming. Listen. 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 You don't need to shout. Nobody does. I've been saving this to the proper time. Your application for transfer to U.S. Airborne, endorsed. Forget it, sir. It's all the same one. I've been wondering how long. I should think about that commission. I will, sir. Give me a hand on, will you? Yes, sir. All right, fellas, ready to move. Sorry for the man who hears the pipes. Wasn't born in Scotland.